My name is uh, Astri Arnesen, and I am the president of the European Huntington Association. And we are organizing this webinar in close collaboration with our colleagues in the International Huntington Association and globally uh, with other colleagues uh, throughout the world. Uh, it's, um, it's really been a tough week since I uh, late Monday evening opened my computer because I just wanted to send a last email. And there popped up an email from Roche explaining that they would stop dosing Tommy Nursen to the clinical trial participants. It was really a great shock and very uh, unexpected. And as hard as this message is to swallow for all of us being HD affected, I cannot imagine how tough a message it must be for the trial participants who have dedicated so much time and effort and obviously had high expectations to the results from the study. So I really feel that this past week we've been in a state of um, sorrow and uh, crisis really. And in times of crisis there are particularly three things we need. First and foremost it's information. Good, valid information is necessary to help us understand and try to make some sense out of the mess. And secondly, we need to be together. And I really hope that nobody feels they have to deal with this situation alone. Because truly there is a lot to the statement, shared burden makes it easier to carry. And third, in times of crisis, we need leaders we can trust to help guide us out of the chaos and point to solutions and where to go from here. So basically this webinar aims to address all these needs in their own modest way. And uh, we will not solve anything today, but we will get some information, we will be together, and hopefully we will also see some opportunities from, for where to go from here. Thanks. So I'll just introduce myself. I'm Sarah Tabrizi. I'm a professor of neurology at UCL in London. I'm the director of the UCL Huntington's Disease Centre. I've worked on Huntington's disease for 25 years. Uh, I'm passionate about trying to find effective treatments and I have been in very closely involved with this program since 2011 and taking forward the first program of a Huntington lowering agent. And uh, I am honoured and privileged to be with you today and uh, to answer any questions as much as I am able. Thank you so much. Anne? So, hello everyone. So I'm Anne Rosser. Um, I'm Professor of Clinical Neuroscience in Cardiff in the UK and I'm current chair of the European Huntingdon's Network. Um, I've also worked with um, uh, Huntingdon's uh, participants for about 25 years now um, and um, I'm, I'm a site PI for Roche and again very pleased to be on this webinar and looking forward to answering some questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being here. I don't know if Bernard Landfamaya yep. has joined us I'm yet. Here. Yes, thank you. So my name is Bernhard Landfermeyer and I had the privilege um, to assist in the in founding the European HD network and uh, I am also serving as the principal investigator of Enroll HD, um, the you know, platform many of you are familiar and engaged with. And my site at the University of Ulm the HD center there has been a part of the phase one studies as well as the consecutive um, studies. So I have been involved um, quite a lot in the Tominersen program. 
And for me, like for all of you, this came quite as a shock and, and as an, something unexpected. So I'm here to discuss with you my take on what happened. And we, I think it's obvious that we don't have all the information that we would love to have at this point in time. So we are going to give you preliminary answers, I stress preliminary, and there will be the need for updates as we are in the position to have had a personal look at the data that led to the decision of the Independent Data Monitoring Committee on Thank Monday. You. Thank you so much for being with us today, uh, Bernard. Uh, Rob Hasselberg. Thank you, Astri. Um, my name is Rob Hasselberg. I'm a HD positive uh, person, let's say, so I come from a Huntington family. Um, and I was affiliated or affiliated, I was involved in the trial, not as a participant, but I was part of the steering committee that oversaw this study. Um, so I have been, uh, well, asked by Rosh to sit in this committee to give a patient perspective to the whole trial and to really let our voice of all these, well, 290 people plus in this call uh, to be heard in the, in, in the clinical trial. And uh, yeah, as such, I'm here. Happy, really happy to have you, Rob. <laughs> Philippa. So hi, everyone. Um, I'm Philippa from Portugal, Philippa Zulio, and I'm part of the board of the European and of the Portuguese Huntington Association. And as Astri explained, during this, uh, this webinar, I'll be monitoring the chat box. So please leave your questions or your comments there, and I will try to bring them up after the, the presentations. Thank you so much. This is real teamwork as always in the Huntington community. And since uh, it's really nice for all of you out there to know who we are, I, I have a short poll. I will just ask you about who you are representing, so to, be, so to speak, as a group, because I'm curious. So we will allow a few seconds for people to vote. Who are you? Who are we here in the, in the group? It's always good to know who is around us, this virtual world. It's, it's a strange world where you are together with a lot of people and not really seeing them or knowing who they are. Wow, great, you are so quick. This is the quickest group I've ever seen in a poll. I will pause now in uh, five seconds. And I hope you can see it. Share results, uh, I will share results, just a second. So we are really as expected, can you see them? Yes, so 64% of us are uh, categorizing themselves as HD family members, which is really nice. And, and what's, what's the main aim, as I said, for this, for this webinar. So welcome really everybody. And uh, we will start this, uh, this uh, presentations or the, the, the input from people here with a short video where uh, Lauren um, is, uh, is uh, and now I cannot find it, huh? Isn't that amazing? I have to find Lauren. She is ready here somewhere on my screen. I just need to see here she is. Just a second again. Uh, Lauren Boak from Roche will uh, give a short statement. Uh, so you will hopefully hear and see her now soon. Can you see her? Can you see the screen? Yes. 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 Okay, yes. then I will start the video. My name is Lauren Boak and I'm the Global Development Leader for the Tom and Nursing Program at Roche. I know by now many of you will have seen the news about the Generation HD1 trial. I want to take a moment to speak to you personally during what is a very challenging week for everybody to help explain what has happened. I recognise how difficult it must be for the HD community to hear this news, especially for those who are participating in the studies and their families. Roche and Genentech announced earlier this week that we will be permanently stopping dosing with Tom and Ersten and placebo for participants in the Phase 3 Generation HD1 study. 
this decision was based on recommendations from an independent data monitoring committee. We have also paused dosing in the open label GenExtend study. I want to take a moment now to reassure you all of two important things. Firstly, this decision was not based on any emerging safety signals, but on the assessment of the totality of the data and overall benefit risk for participants. Secondly, whilst we have stopped dosing participants, the studies have not stopped. There is still so much for us to learn and we are thankful to those who will continue to participate to help us all get the most out of these important studies. The commitment that you and your families are making to further the science of this program is not lost on us. And on behalf of Roche Genentech, I want to sincerely thank you. You are the true heroes. We are also very grateful to the global patient advocacy community and the support they are providing during this time. We are working closely in partnership with them and will continue to be responsive to your questions, your concerns, in the best way we are able to. We commit to sharing study results with the HD community as soon as we better understand what occurred during the trial. The learnings uncovered will contribute to the greater scientific understanding of Huntington's disease, to Tom and Urson and other investigational programs. There really are so many valiant efforts ongoing in the field, with our own Roche group and at other companies and research groups. So it remains a tremendously hopeful time for the community. So thank you for tuning in today. We look forward to engaging with you in the weeks and months ahead. Bye for now. Okay, that was just a short... Uh, uh message directly from Roche and Lauren, who is in charge of the uh, work they are doing there. And uh, now I want to hand over to, to Sarah for you to comment a little bit more on uh, on what happened. You are a clinician, you are deeply yeah. connected. Thank you. So I've written some notes about uh, what I wanted to share with you. So what happened? Hello? Wait for Hello? them to give their jargon. James, you have to unmute to mute yourself, sorry. Sorry for that, Sarah. Now you are muted, Sarah. So the news about stopping dosing in the Generation HD1 Phase 3 trial of Tom and Nursen was really unexpected and has been heartbreaking for all of us in the HD community who are all striving to find effective disease-modifying therapies for this terrible disease. I also found out on Monday night at 9 p.m. in the UK when you also found out the news. And I was truly devastated for all the patients and the families and the community that I have grown to love dearly over the last 25 years. The information I have and we have at the moment is limited to what Roche disclosed in their press release and the letter to the community. All we know is that an independent data monitoring committee, and that's a group of neutral, independent experts, nothing to do with Roche, nothing to do with the trial, whose remit is to regularly monitor the unblinded data. And they are the only people who have access to the unblinded data. And their remit is to monitor unblinded data from an ongoing study. They met and they recommended that dosing in the phase three study be stopped. Based on the totality of evidence indicating that the Tominers and treatment arms demonstrated unfavorable risk benefit or efficacy trends compared to the placebo arm over time. 
there was no new or emerging safety signals identified for Tom and Nursing in their review of the data. Now, this was four days ago, and Roche, I believe, has only just received the data, um, and they have yet to start their unblinded analysis. So no, none of us have seen the data. I think it's going to take time for the data to be analysed. It's going to be take time for the biofluid samples to be analysed. And Roche have committed to sharing their learnings and next steps with the community as soon as possible. With their consent, patients will continue in the study to be followed up for safety and benefit or efficacy outcomes. And this is important to help us understand the drug with what it looks like when people are on drug and off drug. As investigators, our immediate focus is to ensure our patients understand what this decision means for them. Although this announcement is very disappointing, I am encouraged by the huge contribution the community is making to science. And I'm convinced that we will learn a lot about Huntington's disease and all other potential treatments that are being developed from this study. There are so many important ongoing efforts among many companies, and I think it's really important not to lose hope. The HD community, I think, is in a resilient community, and we will get through this setback together. We will learn from it, and we will get through this. The trial was an enormous undertaking. The HD patients who volunteered in these early trials are forever the HD heroes because they took on the role for themselves on behalf of the entire HD community. Researchers in basic science labs at Ionis and Roche have worked tirelessly to design the best possible drug they had for testing. And everyone worked in clinics around the world to test the drug. Everyone involved, families, scientists and physicians, wanted another outcome. But for this trial, we didn't get it. We don't have a lot of answers right now. As I said, the stop only occurred on Monday night and it's the first that we knew about it. So Roche is at the very beginning of looking at the data. This is science and science has to strive for the truth. And we have to do our very best to learn scientific lessons from this and move forward. This ASO program was the first program in the HD field targeting the disease causing protein. It was still a major innovative step forward in the testing and development of novel therapies to lower the level of the mutant Huntington protein. And we will learn a lot from that and it will inform other programs. Finding treatments for cancer took many trials to get it right. And we now have effective therapies for many previously incurable cancers because of this. And the learnings that came from those early trials, and we need to be strong all of us who work in Huntington's disease for our patients and not give up fighting. I am absolutely passionate about finding treatments for Huntington's disease. I'm involved in many programs to take forward potential treatments. And I promise the community that I will leave no stone unturned until we find an effective treatment. And we'll all work tirelessly until we have one. And when we have the Q&A, I'm happy to answer as many questions as I can with the information that I have at this stage. But I promise you, in many conversations we've had with Roche this week, and Rob and Bernard have been involved in those conversations, they are absolutely dedicated 
to sharing this information as soon as they have the information with the community. Thank you so much, Sarah. And I'm happy you have still the energy there. And you look so young and powerful. So that's that's. Promising. I'm not giving up. It's like <laughs> we are going to keep fighting. Give. Very good message. Thank you. So, Rob, I want to hand over to you because we will allow all the panelists to come and, and say things before we really start being more interactive and, and take up questions. But you are a family member, as you said. How was Monday evening for you? Um, uh, I think by far one of the worst evenings in my life. And I have... I have lost family members, etc. Not due to COVID or something, but just natural age. Let's say. Um, no, this was it was horrible. Actually, I can I can sort of run it chronologically through it. But uh, like Sarah or like you asked me, actually, it was more I didn't check my phone or email in the evening, and just before I went to bed or wanted to go up, I just checked my phone, and it was just before ten, and I saw some messages around this. And at 10 o'clock, there was a meeting with Roche to further discuss this. And I can tell you, I mean, at that moment, it didn't sink in yet. Not with me or, the, you know, because there's not all the information or not. I mean, Roche also doesn't have all the information, but it didn't sink in in my head yet. Um, and you posted a very dark photo. Of yeah, I, because afterwards, I, I really felt very depressed. I have to, I can be honest. I mean, I'm a positive person in general, let's say so. Um, but at that moment, I didn't feel so happy after that meeting and hearing it would be stopped and it would be, uh, yeah, actually cancelled the trial at least. Yeah, so um, yeah, this is of course devastation. I, I have been involved through the HD COPE uh, initiative, let's say, in this clinical trial. So I have been there during the whole design and the discussions around that and making sure that the patients or the participants get, you know, the comfort they can get, which is possible in such a trial. It, it really gives you a good feeling if you are involved in something where you have a voice. And um, of course, I and I think maybe others also in the steering committee have talked about what would happen if, uh, if it would fail. Uh, because that is, I mean, that I always kept in my mind. You know, a clinical trial can always fail. But then when it happens, I mean, I, I could not have prepared for that, to be honest. I, uh, I, I think I, after the meeting, I sat for two hours on the couch, quite devastated, just in the dark, like, what happened, you know? Tuesday, I sort of emptied my agenda and I just, I didn't work. I was just shook. Like, I, I don't know what to do. I have to say Wednesday is better, let's say. And today I feel slightly more optimistic. Um, not, Of course, not because of this trial, but I know there's a lot of information that we will still get. Um, as Sarah already told, I mean, Rush is quite dedicated in, well, I think the basic understanding is any clinical trial data has to be shared. I think this is common ethics, common, it happens everywhere. So also this will be shared. I'm not afraid of that. And then the question is what lessons can we learn? And indeed, there are many other companies working on things and also Roche is not out yet. I mean, we first have to understand what is going on. So, okay, you know, slowly I'm, I'm seeing the bright side again, but um, yeah, till that moment, Mm. I have to Thank say you for sharing, but you are yeah, not I giving up either. So you you have also dig deep and found some new energy somewhere. No, no, of course. I mean, you know, this is this is the reality with clinical trials, and of course, it's it's it, it's less painful if a if a drug, uh, let's say, um, how do you say it, gets killed in a in let's say preclinical or in phase one, when it doesn't show that it does anything, then you say, okay, but now there was already so much positive energy on around that program and it was scope, you know? Yeah, then you fall harder down when the bad news comes, right? But this is still reality and uh, many things are ongoing in the background. So I, I'm not afraid that we don't find a cure. It's more a matter of when do we find it? And I think, you know, I think I also said it on Facebook when I posted that, you know, it's, it's one step back and then we can make maybe two steps forward and I'll make sure that at least as long as I can, uh, uh, I, I'm involved and I will push to make this happen. I mean, yeah. Yeah, thank Always. you. Good to know. Good to know. And that brings me very nicely over to you, Anne. 
uh, roster because uh, what are really how can we understand this at this point in time the implications and how serious setback is it i mean will everything stop i think that's the major worry yeah, for somehow sure. For sure. So, yeah, so I do have a few words to say about all of that, Astri, and some of it will pick up on things that Sarah has um, already said. So, you know, the Generation HD1 trial is the first and certainly the largest study of a potential disease modifying treatment in Huntington's. And so it's not surprising that we all pinned a lot of hope on it leading directly to a treatment. And Rob, you described very eloquently how you felt and we completely understand how difficult this must have been for family members and, you know, completely sympathise. Um, so we need to acknowledge that we're all disappointed following the events of this week. But we also need to place this in context. And I just want to say a few words to, to try and do that. So first of all, as Sarah has already explained, we don't know yet what this means for Tom and Ursin, And we won't know this for a while yet. And this is not because anything has been hidden from you or from us, but simply because this study has generated a huge amount of data and it takes a lot of time to analyse this in depth. So secondly, I don't think this tells us whether or not other um, Huntington lowering treatments will be successful. So there are many reasons why this trial may not have worked at this stage. And moreover, this is one trial of one agent. So there are other Huntington lowering agents, as many of you will know, um, that are, are currently being trialed or coming towards trial. And they all have slightly different mechanisms of action, which may be important. So it's really vital at this stage that we don't jump to conclusions about Huntington lowering treatments in general. So thirdly, Huntington lowering isn't the only therapeutic approach. So there are many other disease uh, or potential disease modifying treatments being developed that have completely different mechanisms of action. And this is really important because when you're tackling any problem using a range of different approaches tends to increase your chance of finding something that works. So I want to come back to the Tom and Erson trial because I think there are some additional important things to say about it. And as Sarah has already indicated, this has been a landmark study for Huntington's. Um, such a large trial of a complex therapy has never before been achieved in Huntington's disease. So it has already been invaluable. And just to give you a few tangible examples of what has been achieved, you know, it's taught us that we can do large and well-powered studies in Huntington's disease in using a, an intervention. It's shown us that we can test complex interventions in Huntington's. So giving a treatment through a lumbar puncture is complex and it took a considerable amount of work to set this up. And I think this gives us confidence about setting up other complex interventions. And it has pushed us further to think about uh, more clearly about a whole range of other things, such as the outcome measures. And, you know, a lot of work has been done on that in this study as well. So I, I think, you know, if you are a participant in this study, you can rest assured that your time and commitment have not been wasted. Um, and really importantly, we've still got a lot to learn about Tom and Ursin. And so it, it may sound a little strange to say this, but for those of you who are in the study, you can greatly accelerate what we understand about this by continuing to be assessed, even though you won't be getting the drug. And it is, of course, up to you whether you choose to continue in the trial or not. But I would urge you very strongly to consider uh, continuing. So to sum up, I think there are some important messages that I'd like you to take away. So first of all, we must not make assumptions about Tom and Ursin before we know the results of the full analysis. And I think it's also important that we remember this won't necessarily be a neat answer and it may um, be necessary for further studies to be undertaken. Um, secondly, as far as we know at the current time, this should not affect other Huntington lowering trials. And finally, 
um, I also want to really emphasize um, what Sarah said, which is that the scientists and clinicians and the many others working on finding therapies for Huntington's disease are fully committed to this aim and will continue working just as hard as we did before this result to take the field forward. Thank you so much, Anne. And you, you addressed a question I know many have asked. Is this the final ultimate stop? I mean, is this the big stop for Tommy Nursing? Not necessarily. There may be, you know, revised on, on whatever we will learn. There, there may come up new ways of, I don't know, try to use it, huh? Yeah, mm. absolutely. Mm. So, Bernard, you are managing one of the biggest sites in this study. Uh, I don't know um, how you see this, uh, and, and do you think people will, will find the motivation to, to continue to take part in the trial, despite that there will not be any administration of the active drug? Well, I know from the discussions that we had to have with the participant right after the news broke, my impression is that a fair number of participants do choose this path. And, and they, and I think it's important in this context to realize that dosing was stopped, but not the assessments overall. I think that's important because if you, as you dose out or stop an intervention, things may happen that are an indicator of what the compound does. And this is important to be aware of and to know. But let me say something <laughs> that relates to what Rob related to you. I felt really bad on Monday as well in, in the evening. And in part and it, because I asked myself at the end of the day, I was involved, not in a decision-making position, but I was involved in the, in the design of these studies. So I asked myself, did we make a mistake? Hmm? Did we do something wrong? here. And the, I don't want to sugarcoat this here in, in any way, shape or form. And it, that's a possibility. And it, remember that we and it, uh, opted to go from a phase one study and it, that showed that there was an impact in a biological sense right away to a phase three study, yeah? proving efficacy. And that normally you have a step in between where you learn about the dose. We skipped that step, and that was a judgment call because we felt, well, and the, and the compound looked safe and, and it looks as if and there is a path forward without a very large dose finding study that would have taken at least two years or not longer. With hindsight, I'm not so sure whether we at the time made the right decision and, and whether we gave Tominosin the fair trial that it deserves. So overall, this is no doubt a bad setback for Tominosin and for potentially, although that's a question mark, given that we have so limited information for other Huntington lowering approaches as well, potentially. But I believe for reasons that we hopefully can discuss in the question and answers, and that Terminersen, the Terminersen program is not dead. It's not dead. And it, I don't know that for sure, but that's my impression from the interaction with, with the Roche folks and from the signals that they sent. The study drug administration is stopped, not the study as such. The and dosing in the gene extent, the open label part is paused, not terminated. So I believe we may read this in an optimistic way, and I'm not sure whether that will be the final result, but I think we are entitled to do this, that that is, gives us now a reason for a pause, for a very careful and thorough analysis of the data and a potential restart 
potentially with a, with a more even better considered dosage of the compound. And I would like to close with um, sharing with you what I used to have on the screensaver of my laptop when I was working in Boston as a postdoc. That was a quote from Winston Churchill. It said, the route to success is to go from failure to failure with undiminished enthusiasm. That's not always easy to muster, but I, it helped me at the time when I was a postdoc. And trust me, being a postdoc is not always a happy life. And so maybe that, and that attitude may assist in coping with the situation that we are in right now. Thank you so much, Bernard. Yeah, and I want to end this webinar because, as I said, there will remain a lot of questions. Uh, but I will end this webinar. I wanted to share, but I cannot find it. So I will just say to you, because one of the participants in the trial, Matt, he has been really uh, open, transparent in sharing his journey with us, being part of the trial and worries and concerns and things. And he posted on Facebook a photo with some sayings that I really loved this week. And it says, reset, readjust, restart, refocus as many times as you need to. Just don't quit. And you have all said that you are not going to quit <laughs> and we are certainly not going to quit yeah and we embrace you and I, I, I am so sorry we cannot really be together, but then we couldn't have managed to gather so many people in such a short notice. It's been amazing. Mm -hmm. And we will continue to inform you when we get access to new information. Maybe we can organize a new webinar in a few months ahead when we know more about why this decision was made and what's behind it. So thank you. All of you, we were close to 300 throughout the entire hour and a half. It's amazing. And take care, everybody. And I hope you feel a little bit encouraged and a little bit more informed. And certainly you are part of our wonderful community. It's, it's rewarding to be here, even if it's a bumpy road toward finding efficient drugs for, for the disease. Thank you. I really thank want to you. thank the panelists. Thank you. Thank you so much. And for everybody who has helped organize and spread the news about this. And, and let's wave to each other. It's nice. <laughs> Good night. Love you all. Good night.